Hello everybody and welcome to your European D2C action here tonight with me, Durka, in the JD Studios, joined uh, joined by Blaze. Let's head over to the draft and how are you doing tonight? We started a little bit late, but it's all good, right? Yeah, halfway between the daylight savings time of last week and uh, the current state of affairs. It kind of gets that middle ground there. And uh, assuming we, we get some really fast-paced games, we might still be on schedule for the subsequent match. So I'm looking forward to some very active games. I mean, Power Rangers Empire, obviously the matchup is a little bit skewed, so that might be a factor in how quick the match goes, is if the team that we expect to pull forward Empire uh, does dominate to the degree that they have been recently, then, yeah, there's a lot of potential there. But... Either way, this is very, it's not full CIS or anything like that, but it, it definitely fits very well into the European metagame of uh, very active and involved heroes. Oh yeah, definitely. And with Empire picking up two of their favorite heroes right now in the Axe and Lena, you know, forgetting about the Sniper for now, Juggernaut not picked up, but going for those two really high impact heroes very, very early on. Power Rangers, like you said, we're, we're definitely expecting Empire to come out on top, but if PR can get the heroes that they want for Dichira and Cheshire Cat, They'll put, up a, they'll put up a fight. Yeah, so it is kind of interesting the Sniper gets all the way through to the fourth pick in this first phase here. But uh, all the same, I kind of feel like Team Empire have the heroes that can deal with it pretty well. You've kind of got that Lena Laguna alley-oop going on with uh, both of them getting into the action, getting the taunt, getting the LSA. And that Laguna will pretty much be guaranteeing you some real Culling Blade kills. I mean, when both these heroes hit level 16, as uh, they will probably have a really good mid game to get there quickly, you're going to be seeing essentially a combination of uh, about 1350 pure damage when you consider the Culling Blade kill threshold and the likely Aghanim Scepter pickup for the Lena. There's very little that can sustain through that. Even if you get an early BKB up on Sniper, you really just want to pad out your stats as much as you can. Get, get into yep. the Scardi as quickly as you possibly can. Sand and Yasha, obviously, but yeah. we're seeing some deviation in item builds from Sniper. Over, over in China, we've started seeing Desolator on him. You know, very early mm. on, pick up a Deso pick. If, if you're trying to break high ground at 20, 25 minutes, it's definitely worthwhile. Yeah, very powerful slow siege mechanic, but uh, they're going to have to make sure that the Venge is always in the right position if they're going to go for anything aggressive like that, because the swap out from the taunt is going to be extremely important. If the sniper gets taunted by Axe but gets swapped out, because he has such an ex extremely wrong, long range with take aim, he pretty much is still going to be in the position he wants to be. It's not like Axe is going to be able to to force him to come into the base like he can do with some melee heroes. It's going to be still Sniper hit, uh, hitting the wrong target, obviously. It's a plus 40 armor axe, but it's much better than being pulled into a position where you're just going to be killed off uh, abysmally. So, yeah, right now, Team Empire breaking into Phase 2. They do ban out Dit Yoraz Slark. They already took out his Troll Warlord, so I'm actually curious if he's going to be picking up Sniper or if he's going to go for something else. Recently, he's been playing a lot of Juggernaut, a little bit of Phantom Lancer, so we'll have to see. Yeah, definitely. But looking at the two final bands there, PR take out the Earthshaker and Empire ban out the Dazzle. These are both heroes that Empire have definitely been very, very comfortable with and have succeeded with. So support-wise, we're looking at Lena and she could be mid, could be support. We've seen that in China, but not really in Europe. But we've also seen Yoki play this sort of safe lane solo or off lane Lena. But now the SD's picked up. More likely than not, it's going to be roaming Lena and Shadow Demon. Actually, c coming back to your Berserker's Call cool point, that reminded me of something back in Dota 1 where you could actually drag Roshan back into the Dire Fountain with Axe. You called him like two or three times on the path backwards and you'd glitch him through the base. You can't do that with Sniper. <laughs> Not so much. He's, he's definitely one to stand his ground, and he's going to have a, a lot of sniping potential now with the Assassinate plus Ice Blast here. You get those two on most heroes, and they're going to have some issues. But I actually like the Shadow Demon response. You see the Assassinate coming, you will be able to disrupt that, and that's going to cause a lot of issues. Once you get a Yules on Lena, a Blink on Axe, a disruption for the Shadow Demon, who are you actually going to connect and Assassinate on? Yeah, it's going to be difficult. SD was a hero that fell off, what, like six or seven months ago? But before the start of this year, we hadn't really seen him played at all. London Conspiracy, I feel, was one of the few teams that was still picking him up. And they would go for this... I, I struggled to call it cheesy because they definitely made it work and it wasn't really that cheese strat. You kind of expected it. But SD, Kunker, and uh, Exil Invoker. Mm -hmm. They would run around oh, yeah. finding kills early game. But the Chinese teams have picked up on this. They've been running, uh, C Deck especially, have been running Shadow Demon Lash Rank, and we've seen IG go SD, or, or VG as well, go SD Lena. 
Yeah, essentially also denial picking the Zeus here just in case they wanted to run like a one position sniper, the Zeus Ancient Apparition and potential long range spells like Shrapnel and Assassinate. That's a lot of global damage they don't want to have to deal with and it's more for their side than anything else. The question is, where will this Zeus find his home? Is he going to be a supportive Zeus alongside the Shadow Demon? If so, they're going to have to be involved with the Lena more than anything else, and their carry is going to actually have to pick up a Disable as well. So anything that can follow through on the Disruption is fine, but uh, I don't know. I, I'm not feeling really PA so much because there's a lot of magical damage. Spectre? Uh, Spectre could do all right. Uh, it's It doesn't really suit the tempo that I'm seeing, but I love the synergy between Thunder God's Wrath and Haunt. Also, the fact you're up against a sniper, you know, we're always seeing Clockwork, Spectre, Gap Closers. Axe does fit that role, and you can get in there with a the Shadow Demon, like you mentioned, and just hold down that sniper for the Light Strike Array. But I, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to tell now. The Zeus pick has kind of thrown me off of that idea that Shadow Demon and Lena would definitely be roaming mm. supports. The Zeus could fit anywhere. Yeah. I mean, they could even, like, safe lane farm the Axe Blink really quickly, and then they could throw the Zeus in the off lane. We've oh, yeah. seen that from time to time. I, I don't know if that formation would be really reliable, because uh, you have to hit your ulti timings very critically, but it's definitely, uh, they're very flexible, is the key point to mention here. Uh, the only thing that's pretty certain, as I, uh, we're both pretty much on the same page, that Shadow Demon is going to be supporting here. Although mid Shadow Demon is a thing, <laughs> you, you want him to really just be that disruptor in the fights, and you don't really need big levels for that. It's definitely a thing, but I, I think we've only seen one player do it, CTY over in China, when, mm. when he was uh, trying to break out into that tier one scene. He played Shadow Demon mid and crushed people with it. The, the only problem you have is he doesn't scale that well. You know, you get four staff, maybe you get a mech and become that utility hero, but he does a lot of damage and get lots of early kills. But if, you're a, if your opponent has some, some way of turning fights around in, in the mid game, he does become a bit of a liability as a hero. Mm-hmm. I don't know, if you've never seen the, the pub stomping, Atos rushing mid Shadow Demon, that thing sets up so many poison stacks. Like the four, the five stack seems like a dream, but with a, something like a Rod of Atos, you can actually set it up pretty well. But no, here we're probably going to be seeing that mid Lena. Shadow Demon is going to be roaming around to help her and the safe lane, and then we just have to find where Axe and Zeus belong. But Puck is going to be picked up for Power Rangers here, so some really good potential in the off lane. Uh, presumably. Uh, obviously, if they want to run Sniper safe lane, they can put Puck mid, and that's fine, too. Um, the one key thing, uh, if Puck does go off lane, is if he goes for the orb and Shadow Demon immediately disrupts, it's pretty unlikely he's going to get the ethereal jaunt out. So um, maybe you phase shift that, maybe you just don't get in that position in the first place, but Puck is going to have to make sure that he makes every second count when he's trying to play that escape card, because the Axe, the Shadow Demon, they're going to try to disrupt that as best as possible. Oh, you mentioned it. PA is actually hmm. picked up there by Team Empire. Yeah. So, I mean, it's good, but they have to be wary about how much magical damage she's going to be taking. Match, max Magic Missile, uh, Ice Blast, Assassinate, and anything from the Puck. And PA will be dropping pretty quickly. The, of course, they do have the defensive disruption, so a couple of those they should be able to dodge. Yeah, definitely. One of the biggest problems that we've seen from here is like Luna, PA, uh, Gyrocopter hasn't really picked it that much uh, recently. But it's that early BKB. You can't really go for it. And to be a big impact in teamfights, you've got to really play your hero as though the, the fragile little vase that you're you know, running around with. You're going to juke and jive and try and keep yourself out of danger as much as possible. But when you're against a faceless void, who's more likely than not what, going to be in the one role here, put sniper mid and then puck off lane. Sure. Or, or do you put void, void off lane? Then you've got sniper safe lane, puck mid. It's, it's hard to read. It, it's a little difficult, but I think Void needs farm here. Like, yeah. if he's if you're looking at a face of Void that only has one item come 20 minutes, then you're probably in a losing position for this game. The Axe is going to be blinking. You need that initiation, and uh, I don't know, Axe Mo on the puck, he can do certain things, but I, I still feel he's a little bit limited here. Uh, the, I think the most important thing for Power Rangers, though, no matter where the cores end up going, is how much farm J4 gets. Because if you look at the lineup, it's actually extremely Ice Blast-centric. The... Chronosphere setup, the Dream Coil setup, uh, sometimes slows and stuns coming in from the Venge Sniper. Like, they're all about making sure that J4 gets his Ice Blast to connect, and therefore it's really important that he gets a good Ags or Midas timing. So he wants to kind of play that hero that just gets to sit around, farm the Dire Jungle, maybe the top lane a bit, and globally uh, use uh, his utility there, the Ice Blast, to contribute to his team, but mostly focus on himself. Yeah, we'll see how things pan out. One thing, though, that I'm looking at this is PR, if their laning phase goes south, 
they don't really have, you know, a Storm Spirit, Shadow Fiend, any of these heroes that can jump into the jungle and and utilize it to come back. You know, th there's no troll, there's no axe on their team. Whereas Empire, if their lanes go a little bit wonky, they've got PA who's decent at farming jungle. But I'm looking really at the Lina, Zeus, Axe. So they can they can flash farm decently. So I think PR really have the onus on them to win or stabilize their lanes very early on. And then control the map, like you mentioned, with the global potential they've got. AA, get him level 6 as quickly as you can. Do, do you think he still goes for the Midas, though? Does he have enough time with the roaming and global power from Empire? It's impossible to say that just from the zero minute mark here at the fountain. <laughs> yeah. He has. It comes down to how much, how many kills and assists he gets in the laning phase, if he's able to get all of his creep pulls undisrupted. It really just comes down to his GPM at that decision point. We'll see how well he does. What are we, what are we paused for? Uh, it looks like one of... Yeah, Yoki is not in just yet. So, there. Oh, actually, in Cheshire Cat as well, so... Oh getting dear. them back from the bathroom or something, I don't know. Oh dear. Well, did you are on this sniper? Axmo the stand-in along with J4 playing on the Puck and AA. Jordan playing the Vengeful Spirit while over on the Radiant. Always want to fly Shadow Demon and Aloha Dance Lina. I mm. wouldn't be surprised at all to see them really just spam out the smokes in the first five minutes. Get through those yeah. couple of early smokes and, you know, g ganging any of these lanes is not going to be that difficult. Resolution mm. store uh, the the uh, Zeus, you know he doesn't give you that much before he hits level three. But level two lightning bolt, you can kill people pretty damn easily with soul catcher. Then up on top lane, I've seen aggressive tri lanes with shadow demon, with mm. an axe disruption into Berserker's call is a perfect setup. And then with a light strike array on top, you know you could yeah. potentially see an aggro try here from Empire just for a short mm. while. Yep, Stifling Dagger's no joke on bottom lane either, so with the LSA, the Berserker's Call on that, uh, Disruption should be netting a kill on anybody that doesn't have at least two heroes behind him. So it's all about finding that opening, finding uh, who is going to be vulnerable, and probably not going to be the Void. And generally speaking, Dit Yara, he plays a Sniper with a, a good build that'll get the take aim earlier, so that he's not going to be out in the river, he's not going to be easy to yank, but... That's uh, where you mentioned Smoke of the Seat. That changes everything. And I think PR have to be ready with TPs to respond, at least on the Venge. Void has picked up his hero. Oh, they've swapped around. Cheshire Cat's now on the puck. Axmo will be playing that face as Void. Mm -hmm. So that's, that is definitely interesting. I, I think that putting the stand-in on the faceless void is a little weird obviously they played a, a decent amount of games together but uh, the core roster from pr for the past several months cheshire cat did your raw j4 those guys uh, especially cheshire and j4 have been playing together for a long time so you expect the synergy with the dream crow of the ice blast but void is still a hero that you can live or die by those chronospheres especially in a closest game as this one will be for them yeah, I guess it will come down to the fact that Axmo will have the support, and he'll have J4 and Jotham there sort of, you know, not, not babysitting, but there'll, there'll definitely be some guidance and direction behind him. Mm -hmm. Whereas Cheshire Cat is free to do his own thing. He yeah. can go down to this bot lane and do what he does best, and that's really stick it to this one roll uh, mm -hmm. PA. Yoki is now yeah. joined in, the Axe. Let's get this game underway. Come on, guys. Let's see what you've got. Uh -huh. I think if uh, Cheshire Cat skills Orb immediately and uh, gets an Observer Ward, he can actually get the ward out pretty deep before anybody can get close enough to Sentry. But I think that ward's going to be important because Shadow Demon will be able to screw over Puck uh, at level 1, and then even at level 2 there's a good chance that he won't be able to get the Orb Jaunt the way he wants to. So I, I think Cheshire Cat has to be a little bit concerned about how the offlane plays out, and if he goes out for the ward real quick, that would probably be the best way to uh, guarantee that he's going to be all right. Yeah, we does do. Ooh. double ring of protection. So he's just going to be fighting, it looks like. He's going to be uh, actually trading hits a lot with the Shadow Demon and not escaping as he thinks the PA is mostly going to be focused on the creep wave. Okay. Well, we've seen people, you know, TP to the tier one down a bot from the dark side, run into the jungle, but none of that this game. They'll go as four and smoke through. The Void is the one who's actually lagging behind a little bit. Offer, uh, what, what does he offer at level one fight, though? You, you jump in and you slow people down. It's all about these ranged heroes with Chilling Touch. Is this an aggro try? They've got a magic stick on the void. I think they're going aggro, but oh, we'll wow. see. They run straight into always want to fly. Magic Missile to start things off with a shrapnel and Chilling Touch. There's no way Shadow Demon survives this. We'll self-disrupt and keep himself alive for two and a half seconds, but it's a foregone conclusion. As PR get first blood, and uh, are you right? Magic I don't stick know. Axel has magic stick. Like, that's only going to be good against the Zeus and PA early on. 
So it's, that kind of implies that he expects to go up against the Zeus and PA, which you don't, won't find on the top lane. Interesting. I guess with the stun slows and uh, uh, you know damage they've got from Chilling Touch here, Lena and Shadow Demon early on, we've talked about their aggressive potential. Defensive-wise, you've got disruption, but outside of that, you disrupt one target, there's still two targets for them to jump on. So, Bounty Rune kind of contested a little bit here. It looks like it is going to be Bounty Rune for Axmo, and the LSA is not going to come through, so Axmo time walks to the high ground and he'll be fine. But, yeah, the Observer Ward is scouting out the movements here. They see the two supports down bottom. They know it's going to be a contested lane, but who's sticking around? We've got mid Void uh, and a tri-lane Puck. I mean, I guess wow. it's better than the tr aggressive tri-lane Void, because I really don't like that, but still, Puck in a tri-lane is a very rare occurrence. But then Axe versus Sniper at top. Yoki yeah. with his stout shield and ring of protection. This is not a lane that Sniper just crushes outright. He can get into the creep wave, force it back, and control equilibrium to where he wants it, which is basically pushing it into the tier one of the Sniper. Yeah, once Dityra gets to like level five, level six, he'll have a lot better time in this lane, but at this level one, level two stage, it, it really doesn't make much of a difference if he has the ranged advantage or not. Uh, Exmo is prepared for this matchup against the Zeus, though. He brought the magic stick. This is the lanes they chose, so hopefully they'll work out for them. Phase shift level one on Puck. Like, you're going aggro try. You have your magic missile, your chilling touch, <laughs> but you're going to go with the phase shift. I'm, I'm not entirely sold on how this plays out. You can obviously dodge uh, stuns coming in from Aloha Dance. That's great. Uh, you have, you're able to mitigate a lot of damage with the double ring of protection, and you have tangos for yourself or from your supports, but... Where's the offensive potential? Where's the kills coming from? I, I think it's a little bit of mind games here. They'll put Cheshire Cat on the front lines and like stand him next to the creep wave, and Jodham and J4 will stand so far back that they aren't targets. Like, what they're doing now, Cheshire Cat is the only person that they can go and disrupt, really. So then, mm -hmm. once he disrupted and the stun comes out, he'll face shift, turn back around, and then maybe try and fight. Or yeah. they're looking for, you know, level 3 when they really start applying the pressure. But essentially, this is turning into a one-position puck who's not going to get a lot of experience but gets a lot of gold, which is the exact opposite of what you usually think of. So the blink timing is going to be great, but what else do you go for here? Do you go for, like, a Aghanim Scepter, a Hex? Like, where, what is a one-position puck going to be building? Not too sure. We've seen him do some funky things with Nature's Prophet and Puck before. You know, go for a Dagon very early on just to try and zap people like these squishy supports. At mid lane, I've actually been paying attention to Resolution's skill build. Two in Chain Lightning, one in his passive, so no Lightning Bolt just yet. And I, I'm assuming this is down to the fact that Void you know, has the higher base damage, is going to get those last hits a little bit easier than the Zeus and contest them. So with the Chain mm -hmm. Lightning and the passive, you're zoning, zoning out the Void and also getting more last hits than him. Yeah, I mean, at least offensively, you're not going to deny too much, but he, saying that, he's already gotten four, so not too bad, and yeah, the regen rune is uh, just a very fruitful pickup for the Zeus, like, that is just one of the most insane things he can get for the two-minute spawn, and yeah, he's able to get a lot of damage out now, will the phase shift come for the light strike array? Doesn't even need it, they turn around. Yeah, and that's the turn around onto a lower now, so they'll bring him down, the stick charge from Treasure Cat keeps him alive and healthy, jot him on the run out. As Cheshire Cat needs one more hit from Always Wanna Fly, which he'll actually get, but J4 and Jonam, they're still looking for more. Chilling Touch, there's still one more hit, and with the Magic Missile, they bring down Silent. Tries to blink across, nope. Why isn't he Phantom Striking out? If Not Always Wanna sure. Fly just goes in retreat, they can, he can just get out of that, but I guess they wanted to reset the lane, get the kill on Jodham, but it's not coming. The oh Dragon's God! Missed. The right clicks, he needs two, he won't get either. J4 dueling it out with Always Wanna Fly, now the orb comes through, Always Wanna Fly taking massive damage. J4 will be going down in the corner to the Lina, but they're winning this fight oh, wow. heavily. Oh, I dance down again. It's a double death for the Lena. PR are now five and three. And that's with a void going down in the mid. What? What just, like we knew that this wasn't gonna be a quiet game. The gold, the fight recap doesn't really tell us Jack all because actually no, the second fight, no, no. The first fight recap was for the void. I wanted to see the second one for that fight down mm -hmm. at bot. But I'm pretty sure that PR came out of that pretty damn happy. Oh, Four yeah. minutes in. Treasure Cat comes back to lane, gets himself the experience from what, two kills? The, the, the support's getting a kill on Silent. But Bottom lane was four for far. two, so, and two of those were against the Lina, who's uh, focusing herself on a little bit of farm, uh, most likely towards the mid-game. But they're going to smoke top, they've got the Axe Call, 1-1-3 build from him, so Disruption should be a kill on this Sniper, and the ward gives them a false sense of security here. Can they get in there though? Creep wave, okay, always on a fly, just walk straight through the trees. Disruption start off, and this will set up perfectly for Yoki 
to get the call along with the Lena spells. It shouldn't be too too difficult. Although, 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 <laughs> Aloha starts to the tower. The shrapnel double. This <laughs> feeds from Aloha dance. What is happening? <laughs> Just going in under two creep waves down bottom. Going in under the tower here, not trading aggro whatsoever. This is, I would say, two out of three of Lena's deaths in only five minutes in this game are completely unnecessary. Well, Aloha Dance, he's, he's got the taste for blood. He wants more. He wants uh -huh. revenge. But down on the spot lane, without the setup, there's not too much they can do. Always want to fly his mid behind resolution. And you've got to say that he is crushing this lane. He's doubled up on last hits against the Faceless Void, who has a magic stick and... Uh, What's coming in on the career? Wraith Band and a salve. He, he, he has pretty much been dominated. Resolution so, crushing it. And I, again, I have to emphasize, they chose these lanes. They knew Zeus would be mid and Axe would be top. This is not something they did not expect whatsoever. So the bottom lane success is great. But this Void, did they really think that he had a chance against the Zeus just because he built the right items? Like, Magic 6 great. He's building defensively. But is this kind of like running an offlane Void in your mid where he doesn't actually get that heavy a farm? I'm not too sure. Oh, down on bot lane. They find Cheshire Cat. They make it work. Did it, was that Thunder God's Wrath popped out as well? Yeah. Zeus throws out the ulti just to seal the deal. J4. Silent wants to dive here. Phantom Strike on cooldown for another two seconds. And with the Vortex placed, it looks like... The okay, PA diving onto on Ditya Raw top. Under the tower, looking for the call. But he's being slowed by the Shrapnel, taking a lot of hits and getting very few spins. Now the Wave of Terror, the guarantee kill. Feed from the Axe. Getting just overzealous <laughs> by far. What is going on? More TPs down to bot lane as Cheshire Cat places, uh, well not places, drops the Observe Wards for J4, who, who doesn't really want them. He's walking around with low HP, doesn't have time to place them. Mid lane, not smoked up. Aloha Dance and always want to fly. They're looking for the faceless Void. He's got level 1 in time walk, but he has hit level 6, so Chrono is available. It's just a matter of him not really... Can I have the time to place it when he's locked down and stunned up? But the two supports leave mid alone. They'll head back down towards bottom and J4. Is he the target? Looks like he is. They've gone fishing up onto the high ground. With a soul catcher, this should be easy as pie. Very nice find. Oh, Chrono and, uh, can, can they kill him though? Magic missile? Okay, yeah, they've got enough damage. Axmo. There's no mana and always want to fly, so there's no turnaround. And looks like the Faceless Void did well, does work out in this case. Yeah, it looks like Shadow Demon's just teleporting for some free experience. Just double creep wave onto the tower, but uh, usually you want your Shadow Demon to be TPing and disrupting you, shift queuing that up, but mana and cooldown makes that impossible. So um, it's a, a hectic game from both sides here, but I gotta say that a lot of more Empire's deaths are unforced errors than anything else. So they've got to shape up a little bit here, since again, they are the ones that are favored in this best of two heavily. But oh, now man. we see the vision on Yoki. No way out of this one. No, he was on half HP walking into the side shop. Looks like he's going for that Vanguard first. Picks himself up a ring of uh, ring of health. Mm. But Jodham and Dichira, they knew where he was, knew where to find him. They had his number. Do you think he just needs to play it more safe? Or does he just need to go jungle? Like, there's a huge wave coming up top, so I assume he's going to be going and prioritizing that top. What well, goes down, by the way, in the mid there is they just get enough nuke damage from the Zeus pretty much alone. But... Yeah. Yeah, I don't, where does the axe go? Does he keep on testing his luck up top, or does he actually say, screw it, I'll have a Vanguard soon for jungle, stack some maintenance for me? Well, this is a question that I had for Sin the other day when, I, when we were watching uh, a, a Chinese D2CL game. Oh, well, he's going to go into Dichirai. He will get the cooldown as the sniper has to turn himself around, but a headshot proc onto Yoki means that the right clicks aren't really coming in. The two supports have arrived, though. And it should be a pretty simple takedown. With the Culling Blade finishing it off. But yeah, th this is a question that I always have for an axe. When is that time when you say, okay, screw it? Mm -hmm. My well, lane. Silent just, even with the Dream Coil, still diving pretty hard. And now outside of tower range, waits for the coil, gets the Stifling Dagger, but oh, can't man. close the distance. He will go down. Jot him. He's been playing so damn well. He may be the stand in, but he is playing just a very core role in this game here. Just all of his rotations are pitch perfect. He's 2 0 and 7. He is MVP right now. Last hit wise, oh well, last hit wise, we'll skip across that and net worth. We're still looking at Zeus leading the board. Sniper not doing too bad. He has uh, been stopped a little bit up on this top lane, and wh where's he heading now? Dichira with the Treads, Aquila, and most likely Mask of Manus will walk into Always Wanna Fly, but disrupted into nothing. Always Wanna Fly is caught up. Shit Creek without a paddle. He tries to take down J4 with the poison stack and earn. Is it gonna be enough? Yeah. Will it He's take gone. him over? Yep. He's dead. So, I mean, that's post-mortem. Uh, doesn't get the AoE gold bounty, doesn't get the 
uh, experience, but he does get something out of it in exchange for his own life. So, Shadow Demon, he's still just trying to pull ahead, get something for an exchange, but the the ambitious disruption on Shadow Demon when nobody's ready. Like, Axe needs a blink before that's a, the right play. But, yeah, Axe doesn't really have a jungle to go to right now, as we do see Resolutions focused on his own Arc Lightning play. Soul Ring, Bottle, Arcanes, it gives him plenty of mana to play around with, and he's getting all these smaller camps with a lot of creeps, so that's uh, allowing him to just spread the AoE damage around very nicely, but that means Axis just has to stay in the top lane. He does now get the VIP booster, and he should be going straight to the Ancients. Yeah, stacked up once. He doesn't buy. Okay, maybe he's just checking out the the rune area first. He isn't going Vanguard. He's gonna go Ring of Health at Stout Shield Tranquils into Blink Dagger. That's interesting. That's that's kind of odd. You know, we, we've seen the one roll, uh, the one roll axe just go straight into their vanguard because it allows you to farm in spots that you wouldn't be able to normally. That raw HP you get up against Chilling Touch, Magic Missile, which is uh, just being what well, well, has been maxed out already by Jotham, who's level seven and a half. Looking for someone down in bot lane. I didn't realize how high level that uh, that Venge was. Mm. He's actually the same level as the Puck. Wow. One level yeah. behind the faceless void. That's that's trialing bug for you. I mean, they've left him alone quite a bit, but Jotham's every time he moves, he is able to get something oh that profits his experience. Mid lane. Disruption into life strike ray. The TPs are coming in. The savior, not gonna happen. Jotham might lose his life now and give up that streak. Oh, light strike, uh, Laguna Blade even into Culling Blade. The combo we were mentioning in the draft, the Cheshire Cat places a four man coil, but he's losing HP at such a drastic rate. Jaunts up into the trees and Empire come out of that with two kills with no return as bot lane. Dichira is getting 1v1 by Silent, chasing him down, the TP is forthcoming, and no bash, no stun, no nothing from Silent to stop it. Not even the crits, oh man. But still, I mean, forcing him back is going to keep Silent farming uh, more advantageously here. Silent is going to be moving in towards presumably a Battle Fury for himself. He's already got the Quelling Blade, so he's going to be just maximizing his efficiency. In the meantime, uh, Dichira has got a bit of a PvE build too. The Ring of Aquila, Treads, Mask of Madness, he can clear out camps with no trouble at all, and... Uh, if he just sticks around in the jungle for about five or six minutes, he'll pull out his next item. J4 has hit level six. They've got that Ice Blast ready, but Resolution. We we would have thought that he's a pretty easy target, but he's level 11. He's got a Midas now. He's going to be pumping up into that level 16. But more importantly, his next two items. You know, the, the Midas, it, it slows down your, you know, your big primary item just because of the fact that you're spending 2,000 gold on it. But your secondary big item, oh man, Resolution walks into the smoke gang from PR. So look, Jotham's fearless. Like, you eat a lightning bolt and you're like, <laughs> usually a support's like, tucking his tail between his legs, running to the fountain as quick as he can. No, Jotham's like, come at me, guys. Wave the terror out. Who wants some? And... It's basically like, who was that? Where's my target? Show me your face. Exactly. But Resolution There's no hiding from the, the very vengeful spirit. It's an appropriate name indeed. Yeah, Yoki is now farming up jungle camps. Has he got Blink on the way? Yep, Blink on the courier. So I guess that's the main reason why he didn't go for that vanguard. Obviously, 1100 right. gold down the... Well, not down the drain, but slowing down yeah. that Blink. But, but with that logic, why go the Ring of Health? That's I, 875 down before your Blink Dagger timing. And I don't know if it really helped him that much. Like, he definitely was taking a lot of damage. We saw him half health multiple times in the lane, but... Ah, we're going to see a swap in. Yeah, Axmo will finish this off with the help of Dichira, but then the Laguna Blade under Jotham. Axmo has his Chrono, and we'll have to pop it here straight out to Allah Hadass. The Ice Blast coming in will clip Yoki, but Cheshire Cat jaunted straight into that. And now, oh, no. Yoki's in trouble. He didn't turn around, he was waiting for a re-engage or something from the rest of his yeah, team. He thought he had the Blink Dagger for the, yeah, and able to disengage if it was dicey, and then the Ice Blast connects and you it's put on cooldown. So they are able to get more and more out of that, and... It's gonna, it's gonna be Dit Ra that just, or sorry, Silent that has to really put his team on his shoulders here. Like he's gonna have some pretty good item timings coming out. He's got a two thousand gold banked up, and uh, it's gonna be the void stone for him. But even still, like it's a heavy team as Empire is just dying left and right. Always wanna fly again. Walks into no man's land. Jotun waiting for him. Best case scenario for that is pretty sad. Like. I don't know, pull the creep wave or something. Swap back, know. resolution. Life Strike Ray will hold down Jotham and Lightning Bolts with the Arc Lightning should finish him off. Okay, Thunder God's Wrath as well. Did you run out? Caught in by Yoki, and that's a good turnaround. Definitely not an intentional bait from the Shadow Demon, but in the end, it, it all worked out. Certainly did. And, uh,. Yeah, right now they have, I mean, as far as net worth goes, they're still an advantage. The Deuce is going to get more and more value out of this Midas as time goes by, especially when the fact that he wants to go and get that level 16 real quick. 
And, uh, yeah, that's, I mean, all you have to really consider since they don't have to worry about the blink puck for another few minutes. Axmo on this faceless void. Where's he going? What's he doing? On the courier, he's got treads completed, but outside of that, I think progression is close to nil. Whereas you, you look at the net worth across the board, the Axe is 900 gold ahead of him with that pretty awful lane he had against the Sniper. PA now with, you know, closing it on 6k, Sniper on 6k, but it's, it's that Midas on Zeus. Oh, J4. He's got the Midas recipe and wanted to finish it off, but Yoki says no. Mm. Good day, sir, but Dream Call in on the low-hat ounce will find a cons uh, consolation kill. Didn't catch the Axe, though, unfortunately. Yeah, they wanted a lot more out of that. Just getting the one for one for all those TP rotations, and Lena is a support here. It's just... It's a, a little weak. We're going to see Yoki still. looks like he's attempting these Ancients. Uh, full HP, I guess he can do it. Nope. I keep seeing him move in that direction, but it looks like he's just kind of hovering over the mid lane instead. Either way, uh, Jotam coming in. There is the nice disruption on Axmo and a swap back. It's going to be a resolution maybe getting chrono Yoki jumps in, but the chrono's already happened. Assassinate takes down resolution and, and the dominating streak with it. As always, one of flies running from Jotam on that vengeful spirit. That was a super long Ice range. Ice Blast. Oh, man, that would have been nice. But it's going to just go straight down the midline and Shadow Demon jukes to the side here. Well, where's J4 now? 400 or so gold away from Midas completed. 17 minutes in. You know, it's not awful. They've given him a lot of farm priority up on that top lane for the past uh, three or four minutes, getting him up there. But Joltem, you know, even though he's had so many kills and assists mainly to his name, he hasn't really picked up any items. Well, I kind of expect, you know, an urn or something like that, but running around with Tranquil Boots and... I guess the 500 gold means something as well. Yeah, I mean, Tranquil and Magic Wand aren't cheap, but it does show that he's been picking up a ton of support items. That's yeah. why uh, the Ancient Apparition, who's not been doing so hot, is able to have a Hand of Midas recipe this very moment. It's essentially, he's bought nothing. I'm sure at, like, level 1, when they were out in the fountain, he purchased a couple items, but since then, I'm pretty sure he's done nothing supportive, and that's for the, for the betterment of the team. This is a very... Ice Blast centric lineup, just to repeat myself from the draft, and they need to get his Midas out so he can level that ultimate up faster and uh, also get the Aghanims out at a really good time. Axmo has smoked himself up, or was, was that a smoke from Vengeful Spirit? Yeah, Jotam smoked and ran over towards the top rune spot, gets scouted out. Yep, they see him with the Thunder God's Wrath. Treasure Cat still smoked, mm -hmm. he's gonna have to jump himself away. They've got vision, they know he's there. Life Strike Raid not gonna land. He'll jaunt across and still get Laguna Blade. It turns back to fight, always wanna fly, but this is surely Cheshire Cat's death as he face shifts one more hit, but taken out by the Arc Lightning. While up at top, Yoki has found the Vengeful Spirit, calls up, a couple more hits, and here's the dunk coming in. That's very unfortunate. I think that if they had just gone for the coil in that circle where they're all clumped up, and then the, bl the puck blinks to the north, the Venge keeps running and gets her TP out, but in just not using that ultimate, they uh, try for a, a natural disengage, and that's going to cost them both their lives. But it's going to be Resolution caught in the tree line here. He blinked into the trees, but they see him, and they will bring him down. And he, this is a pretty big Zeus. Level 13, that's as high as the Sniper, and it's going to be some good golden experience for J4. How, how did they know he was there? Was it just a vortex? Did, did he jump from lane into trees? Because that's really I unfortunate for Resolution. I honestly didn't catch it, but I oh. pre presume maybe he TP'd down to the bottom lane. Yes, TP's up the most. He TP'd, and then he shift cued the blink. Looking they saw the direction that it must have gone, and they took him out. They take down Son, and made always on a fly, and he's one more hit, and they will find it. Suddenly, wow, kills. PR at this mid lane. The Chrono starting things off from Axmo onto the PA. He, he evaded, like, the first four hits from the Sniper and uh, the Sniper in the Void, but in the end, it was just too much raw damage coming out of PR. The two support kills... Icing on the cake. Really. And they're just racking them up now. Uh, they are able to do so much more with this early set of gold. Like, for Empire, it's get a couple Blink Daggers and get PA tons of farm. That's their, that's what they do with gold. For PR, it's a ton of things. You get the uh, Midas Dags. Oh. Yoki jumps in. The aggressive positioning from Jonathan, though, will allow them to take down Resolution before he can get too much done. Yoki now bashed up by Axmo. With the shrapnel charges. I don't know. Yoki just cannot run from this. Did you realize the BKB? There are five people. Surrounding this axe and did you raw? Did you raw? There's a tower hitting you. Stick charges will keep him alive for now as he TPs himself back to base. I can see where they kind of thought that team fight could have gone their way, but in reality, it was just so easy for PR to pick them apart. The ice blast in particular, going and debuffing two and hitting one. 
uh, they were just able to pick off everybody that was squishy quickly. They shatter underneath them, and yeah, now they're just really making things go from bad to worse. They need to get their next item set before they take a fight, and in that position, even the tier 1 tower is not safe. 18 to 24. 20 minutes into the game. It's, be, it's been nuts. Empire have had about a 5,000 net worth lead for the first 17 or so minutes, but PR with the last two fights, with the last two engagements, they've really, really turned things Look at the experience graph. Yeah, that, that's a big old swing. That's a big old swing from about 1,000 lead to what? 4,000 and climbing? F oh, over 5,000 now. Just oh, just oh gosh, the update. Yeah, <laughs> <No. laughs> the update is like, hang on a second, nope. Let's see how bad it really is. Yoki finds Cheshire Cat, but he's just jumping around, juking and jiving, and Yoki with a blink off cooldown. <laughs> might look to might look to go back in. Ice Blast not gonna latch as Yoki hides in the trees. Yeah. So Puck's got twenty one hundred gold uh, after that blink dagger. He doesn't really have the timing that you'd hope for with the fact that he got the most covered farm. He got the supports behind him, so you'd expect him to get some good farm, and it's it's kind of the average. So I guess we won't really say there's much variation in the build here, as he he's pretty much at the timing that he would if he was playing the solo mid. Do you think the puck would have had issues in solo mid? Is that something that uh, like I'm trying to go back to the laning phase and think about the be the reason that they wanted the puck there, and the best thing I can think of is it's one of the few uh, carry or core heroes that can guarantee. A dodge of the disruption light strike array. That's yeah. that, that's my biggest mindset towards it. But even then, like I don't know, you can delay the light strike a little bit. I, I I think like maybe you can go for a morphling instead of the puck and still rely on the chrono for the ice blast. I I don't know. I just feel like there's there's a few other heroes that can still accomplish that goal of dodging the duo combo of spells and. I haven't seen the value of Cheshire Cat just yet. I think the biggest factor, you know, you've already mentioned the dodging Light Strike Array and the SD combo, but I think the biggest factor was picking a hero for Cheshire Cat. You know, he, he basically has been their offlaner for such a long time. Puck yeah. is one of his biggest heroes. So I, I don't know if that factor's in. Oh, top lane, they're gonna, nope, nope, they don't find the Void as he jumps away from the LSA. Chrono back down onto always one of flies. There's a call in the back, lines on the Digiraw. Pops his BKB, turns to fight, and he'll bring down a lower announce with a couple more right clicks. They kill off the Shadow Demon up on top, and Yoki, Caught now in the Dream Coil. Berserk is called to mitigate as much damage as he can, but there's just too much output here from PR. Just uh, finding the right openings there. They thought they had it, and if they combo that stun and get the light strike as they needed to, then perfectly fine, but the time walk comes out too quickly, and uh, Resolution actually sniped an invis. They don't have Chrono anymore, so that is going to be a free walk away for him, taking the rune, but the bigger kill is on mid. What's PA doing up here while their team's dying up top? PA? Yeah, PA just died underneath the tier 2 tower on the dire side. I think she was going, yeah, she did 679 damage to the Ancient Apparition. She thought she was going into a 1v1 and Jotam's there once again. I have no idea. I thought she was farming. I didn't even realize she died. Yeah, she, she tried to solo kill the AA and that just did not work out. Holy crap. Well, Axmo now has the Mask of Madness uh, on top of his treads. Do you still think he goes for Maelstrom to amplify his magic damage, or do you, you kind of need a BKB here, surely? Hmm. Because if you jump in with Chrono, and Shadow Demon is outside of the Chrono, Disruption is always going to land on you or the target you're going for. BKB just completely says, you know, no, no, this target's going to die. Yeah. I would say BKB is good here, yeah, definitely. I mean, there are plenty of things that go through it, but all the same. It's, it's not like he's going to be the, the main damage dealer to the PA anytime soon, so... Okay, Shadow Demon will be picked. Just a, a quick Blink Dream Coil, and that's that's something that you, you can't claim as a mistake. It's just going to happen. If they're willing to commit those kinds of cooldowns, that's going to be a hero that picks off, gets picked off when he's trying to farm. Pretty simple all-around kill. Puck went for the Yules. I uh, don't know if we saw that. Blink, Yules, no Dagon, no, no straight Aghanims or Hex or anything like that. So he's still going for the slippery little bugger build. Cheshire Cat going to try and be as elusive as he possibly can. It's it's pretty good against the Axe, you know? He jumps in and calls. You can use him up into the air. Before PA has her BKB, same kind of thing. She jumps in and gets completely taken out of the fight by it. But BKB is is nearly done now. Yeah, and Jitjura's had his for a little bit. He's gotten, used it twice, and he's going to be going Scotty on top of that. So although the Mask of Mana seems to make him squishy, he's going to be able to follow it up with a lot of HP items, and that's going to make it perfectly fine, even if they start getting those items that counter it. And obviously, Aloha Dance is playing that support, Lena. It's a different uh, oh tempo entirely. No. 
It's so sad. Self disrupt, but he's just gonna die to the ice blast debuff. Yep, more gold and experience for J4. He's happy for it. He's might have seen their jungle. He's killing their heroes, and he is only 830 gold away from that Aghanim scepter. He he got the Midas in what 19, 20 minutes when they killed Zeus. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like it's only four Ag minutes later, he's basically he's got Ags done. Transmuted two or three times at most, and he's suddenly 4200. But tower gonna go down. That's gonna help them out as well. Map control is a big thing right now. They've been warding this spot in particular right by the tier one multiple times over. And with that vision and the lack of tier one, they could smoke gank the PA every time she goes for the Western hard camp, which is supposed to be the safe one. Supposed to be. Ice Blast goes up into the trees. Oh, really? Really? That's perfectly going to land on a low head ounce, but yeah. there's no follow up. There's nothing to actually stop her from TPing out. That's really good foresight, though, from the AA, I've got to say. Realizing mm -hmm. yeah. Lena pushing out the lane, she's going to go into the trees and TP, not just run back down the lane. J4 is the man. He's been he's been hitting the ice blast pretty well, but I still if I even if he gets the Aghanim scepter and he starts hitting five man ice blast, I I gotta attribute it to Jotam in part. He's the one who got him there by playing this five position support that just did so much work. I mean this guy's three kills and nineteen assists, and he's still only rocking less than four k net worth because he's just being the selfless person they need him to be. Ta uh, bottom lane, it's gonna be a TP away. Silent will be able to get out in time, and. Uh, I assume that the next item for Date Yura is that Monkey King bar. I mean, head, the headshot's nice, yeah. but it's not going to be the 100% uh, true strike that you need it to be. Yeah, he's tanked up, padded out his stats. He's looking pretty nice right now, but I agree. MKB to deal with that PA, definitely on his list of things to do. Jodham, like you were saying, he has been the catalyst for everything. Every single move, every single defensive tower, aggressive play, smoke. You know, sure, he's had a couple of uh, failed attempts, but... Everything that's gone right for PR seems to be down to this guy on his Vengeful Spirit. Now, will they go for Roche? They've got Venge, Wave of Terror, pl plenty of damage on the Sniper. It looks like they'll walk themselves straight into that pit and start hmm. hammering away at the big guy. Contest here from Empire, though. Thunder God's Wrath is ready in level 3. Yeah, that's scary. That is actually really scary. The big burst from Zeus and uh, the smoke of the seed is on a low dance, so they'll pop it here. Dire of no idea, but they have to assume this is forthcoming. So Void... Where is he? Axmo? They don't. The timing's wrong. Roche like is I dead. was just, like ready for this big brawl just for like the last ten percent of Roche's HP, but they take it down so quickly with the Vengeance Wave of Terror that it's not even a contest. I thought Empire would get catch wind of that a lot faster, and unfortunately, it just uh, doesn't work out. Take your raw with an Aegis. J4. Twenty-seven minutes into the game, he's got his Agonims. Actually. Okay, fine. Aghanim's AA. Something a little more interesting just popped up on my screen. Shadowblade Void. Mm -hmm. We've seen this in China. Shadowblade has been uh, a pretty integral item on heroes like Queen of Pain, Faceless Void a couple of times. Ma We've seen it on Magnus in Europe, obviously. It's just that one item where it, it you know, acts as a blink dagger, kind of. But it gives you damage, it gives you survivability, and it gives you that instant initiation. Where right now, Empire have no idea. PR have just dewarded the cliff. So Empire do not know about the Shadow Blade. They don't know Void can suddenly appear from Invis and Chrono the entirety of their team. Yeah, very powerful initiation tool when it's not counteracted, and uh, it's gonna pretty much stop the Zeus and the Axe from blinking out uh, if the Chrono Sphere is used in the proper manner. I mean, Resolution is probably the key target because Axe just built up all these tank items. Like Agadem Scepter used to be a really good offensive item for Axe. Now, like, it's it's kind of weak. They drift it pretty hard with uh, the 6.83C, but. Yeah, either way, Axe is pretty tanky. You want to control him, but you don't want to kill him in the Chrono. They got Resolution, on the other hand, you would love to just tear him and do one. Uh, and make sure the Bloodstone heal is pretty much useless for the team. If he dies first, then nobody's really getting that heal because he was the one that was focused down. But, yeah, I, I like the Shadow Blade. I think it can do some real work here. And at the very w least, it's going to be taxing the supports on Empire's side. Got to buy sentries. Got to buy a gem. Actually, neither side has bought a gem yet, have they? Nope. So we're looking at the period of the, of the game, you know, sort of 25 to 30-ish minutes in the game where a lot of teams start thinking about buying a gem just to keep that map control. Tier 1 towers have been dead for a long time. Tier 2 towers now are the ones you're going to be starting to look at, and dewarding the path towards them is always going to be a vital mission for these supports. So right now with Jotam, 1200 gold, it looks like he's going into a Vlad's, but I wouldn't be surprised to see J4. Now he's got his Aghanim, start going into these support items. Oh, Matt, oh, always want to fly. Interesting positioning. Obviously, he's just going for the suicide ward, but... 
He got it down. I feel like it's uh, it's uh, not the time of the game to be doing that, but oh well. Silence. Caught in the dream core. Ice Blast will not hit. He pops his BKB, but is that is that a 10 second charge? Yeah, 10 second duration gone now. As he got his TP cancelled by the Yules from Cheshire Cat. So, um, Zeus is going to be going right for the Refresher Orb, it looks like. He's already got a Bloodstone. Well, actually, Bloodstone doesn't build that anymore. Jeez, I still I make that mistake every once in a while. But Axe with the Shadow Blade. Uh, looks like this is going to be a pretty easy solo kill. The only problem is Mask of Menace was already used. So although he sees resolution, uh, he's not going to have that damage. And now he has to worry about the follow-through, if, if Yoki's going to be in the right position for it. So at least he'll be lurking. Maybe they'll send an Ice Blast that way first. But he gets him on the edge. Ooh, Yoki's here and does get the Berserker's Call. A max Ranger looks like. Did you raw? Will blink away at the Zeus. Ice Blast. Ice Blast. Yeah, who's going to hit though? Takes out resolution. Su oh, man. Suicides himself before the hit. As Yoki sent up into the air with the Yules from Cheshire Cat. And they'll get a secondary kill here, definitely. But that, that suicide from Resolution, spot on perfect. Mm -hmm. So, it works out. Uh, just really, Axbo getting the flank, getting the surprise attack. They do not know. They, I mean, if they did know about it, they obviously didn't uh, scout it out. The only thing is really Thunder God's Wrath that would show at that point in time. So, him getting into that tree line... It's uh, it's like a free smoke for Axmo. He gets to move about the map, and he gets to find that opening. Although it wasn't the perfect chrono, the Axe still got the taunt off and everything. They had the reinforcements, and they just wanted a fight. It didn't have to be a perfect one. and So they, they start it, they finish it, and now they have this gigantic advantage. With the Sniper MKB, which should be coming out within 1,000 gold for Dita Ra, they can start pushing in for the kill. Oh, yeah. They've picked up the gem now. J4 has spent his gold on that. Jodham has the Vlads there. They're definitely tooling themselves up for this push into high ground. Tier 2 should be relatively easy on the side lanes. There's no there's no big way for Empire to jump in and contest. There's no, no black hole, no ravage, no way to get past the tower and into the actual ranks of PR here. They're going to have to rely on this PA to do the jumping, but PA is still farming. Silent with the Basher now completed, heads into the dire jungle, and safe in the hands of Aloha Dance, who is uh, well on her way to Agadims, in fact. Only 2k away. Like you said, this means that they're not really putting money into things like the Gemetry site, but it is a very valuable thing up against like the BKB of the Sniper. Like, if anything's going to kill the Sniper, it's the Laguna while he's Mask of Madness. So, they definitely have to play with that in the mind. Jotum, nice to deny against the Creeps. And, yeah, this should be the, about the timing. Like, they did lo just lose the Aegis, but that's an item slot for Sniper to pick up the MKB. And, uh, we actually already see Axmo making the play down bottom. Oh man, with the Ice Blast as well, Resolution not long for this world, Suicide's on cooldown. Oh. Can't get it off in time, he'll get the Disrupt down onto Void, Life Strike Ray lands and Laguna Blade finishes him off. So actually no, Silent finishes him off with a crit, it looks like Laguna Blade would actually take him out. Ooh, there's that Ags, talking about it a long while back, he did go for the Yules before he worried about that Aghanim Scepter, but now it is out on the Fairy Dragon and... Uh, he's got a gem true sight of his own picked up by J4. So what is this really going to accomplish? If he gets it out on the PA before she BKB, she's going to be kind of wrangled to a post. She's not going to be able to really maneuver. If she does break it, she's eating a huge stun. And it just means the BKB doesn't render Puck useless. So it's all about initiation. Chrono or Dream Coil on silent before he BKBs should guarantee a fight for PR. Yeah, I just want to come back to the tier 2 towers on the side lanes top and bot that we saw getting taken down. Sniper obviously took the one in bot lane, but Jotham yeah. TP'd to his own one at top, and both Alina and PA ran away from a solo venge. That's how scared they are, just being displaced <laughs> by the swap, being sent back behind the tier two, that they just allowed the tower to get denied. Yeah, I mean, it is really... It, it, positioning is key. Like, if they are one spell away from dying in a lot of cases here, and actually, a lot of dance... Oh no! Yeah. <laughs> Um, so that spell happens to be the lowly magic missile. <laughs> Did you run with a godlike streak now? Jotham, 3, 5, and 22. He has been a part of, what, two-thirds of their kills so far. Absolutely crazy. 19 to 36, 34 minutes into the game. Net worth-wise, we're looking at about a uh, 3,000 or so lead for Power Rangers. It was up to 5k, but... Silent has been farming exceptionally well. He's been across the map, taking out, uh, taking out creep waves, farming the dire jungle. PR have been relying on team fights and kills, really, which is why we see their experience lead is pretty beefy. 9,000 yeah. or so in, in that sense. 
So, they're gonna make the flank play happen. They pinged out, and they're drawing the line across. They will clear out this creep wave with a sniper, but they want to actually get a flank uh, attack on the top lane. They didn't say, okay, they're top, let's go push bottom. They want to wait for the next rush cycle for that kind of a play. So for now, they're just going for the fight out in the open field, and Yoki seems to be their new target. Yep. Cheshire Cat finds him with a dream call, has to Yule him here, I think, to send him up into the end to cancel that TP, but Digiraw is here with the damage. They'll have, uh, they'll have enough time, surely. Axe will actually what? chronos his own team to get the last hit onto Axe. Faceless Void says, hey guys, that's my kill. Alohanan's taken out by Digira, the sniper. Sniping away as Thundergold Draft level 3 will get a kill onto the Vengeful Spirits. Kappa. <laughs> like... Craig has a Kronos. his own guy, <laughs> kill secured, and then Shadow Blades away. Woo, 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 woo. It's just. <laughs> I don't know. That was pretty cloudy. I, I definitely wasn't necessary, but you know, they, they take a good fight and get off a good initi initiation from Cheshire Cat, and that's all they need to keep doing. They keep uh, the map clear. Roach is going to spawn in about 15 seconds, and a couple of heroes can solo it at this point. You've got to think so, even if that was a clowny move, and you know maybe initially, what you know. One of PR's players would have been like, what the hell are you doing? In the end, they got the kill, they got out of there with a trade on Vengeful Spirit. Morale has to be riding pretty high for Power Rangers, while Empire, they've got a long road to victory in this game. Always want to fly. 4, 12, and 9, running around placing a Always want a ward, man. He's always just yeah. like, please, let me get a ward on the map. But they nope. see him coming before he even gets there with their own wards. And gem denial. That's really sad. Really, really sad. Always want to fly now, all out of war. He's not either. Like, they killed the courier in the mid, too. So he has no courier, no wards. He, his support job has failed. Ugh. And, oh, look! Roshan's back up. Yeah. Time to head on into the pit. Refresh your orb for resolution. He is the... He is, like, the saving grace right now. PA, sure enough, is second in terms of net worth, but we haven't felt her impact at all. She's not been able to jump on the sniper because of his very early BKB. She can't blink and dagger onto him. Axe, you know, Yoki did a decent job early on, got a pretty fast blink dagger. It's just the composition of PR has disallowed any aggressive play from Empire. Well, there you go. Aegis on the sniper. He does end up uh, dropping, I think, the Ring of Aquila, but... You know, now he's in a position to just follow through for the win. At this point, with this much health and th these this many items, like key, as long as they are playing with more than three v five, they they'll be able to take it. Get your raw. His item set is perfect, and I guess you can talk that some things up to bashes and crits, right? Like Silent does have the Abyssal Blade. He can get like the double coup de grace, but. Tira is just so huge. It's it's gonna be hard. Like as long as he stays in the right position in the back line, everything they throw at him won't be enough. Yeah, and I think it comes down to as well, uh, as long as they get the chrono down onto the Zeus. It doesn't really matter about the PA, you've got ways to deal with her. Always wanna fly, sure, can disrupt. Oh, what have we got? We've got Axe jump again, swap back, and Silent is now the one in the middle of four. We'll take down John with a Thunder God's round. The resolution finds that kill, but now he's caught in the chrono. Disruption, great job there onto Lena, will save her life for now, Silent. Getting right clicked down by Dichira as Axmo exits with a kill and on no the buyback. Leader. Oh boy, no buyback on the PA, you're right. It's all down to resolution off. now. But fighting against Dichira, he's literally standing his ground. Right clicking away, no buyback on Zeus. That looks like Empire might just be down and out. Yeah, there's, there's, without the PA, they can't do anything. They'll try one last hurrah with Yoki, go it in, wants one kill. Headshot, for headshot. For a moral head victory, but no, it's not going to happen. <laughs> it's like a headshot. Be... MKB proc, dead. Okay, well, I guess I'm not doing anything here. And that's the Rex, that's the GG, and that is game one in the books. So game one of this two-game series going the way of PR. Great play by them all round. Their draft worked solidly, but it was just execution, execution, execution. Empire had a few slip-ups here and there, I want to say, always want to fly, you know, along with the low head ounce, their, their roaming SD Lena combo just never got going. Yeah, and they were really roaming in the, in the sense that PR forced them to stay active down on the bottom lane. The aggro tri lane stance uh, essentially said, okay, well now you're aggro, we're defensive, naturally we have to support our PA in this position, and as such they were very predictable. Although Lena, Shadow Demon, PA is still a good tri lane, it's one that they knew what they were up against. They knew what they were going to be doing. And uh, Venge, on the other hand, I got to say the Empire misread her movements half the time. Just Jotun was always one step ahead of them, TPing across the map, helping every single lane. And he still gets my MVP in the end. 
What was he? 6, 4, and 12 in the end, yeah. Oh, no, sorry, 3, 7, and 25. Yeah, yeah. J4 is that. the one that's 6, 4, and 12. 25 assists. Well, we'll be jumping into game two shortly, guys, to see if Empire have it in them to bring it back. They surely do. But we'll find out if PR can counteract that. We'll be back in a couple of minutes with game number two.